Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're reviewing a surprising addition to the monitor market, Nixius NX EDG 34S. As of right now, this is by far the cheapest 3440 by 1440 ultra wide on the market that can hit 144 hertz at a price of just US $550. I honestly didn't expect 144 hertz 1440p ultra wides to reach sub $600 prices this year, but here we are in December reviewing a very attractive value option for gamers. The reason I say this is surprising is that 1440p 144Hz ultrawides have only really hit the market in the past year or so. We've had 100Hz and 120Hz options for ages, but with the LG 34GK950F we started getting the first 144Hz models at the end of last year. That IPS beast commands a regular price of $1200, more than twice the price of this Nexius model, and even MSI's cheaper VA alternative in the Optics MPG 341CQR still costs more than $800, so getting these same specs for at least a $200 saving is pretty huge news. The NX EDG 34S also gives ultra-wide buyers an option in the large pricing chasm between dirt cheap 100Hz models, often retailing for below $400 these days, and the super high-end offerings like the 34GK 950F. Really this monitor is positioned perfectly and should be quite popular provided of course it performs up to scratch. So what are the trade-offs here that bring down the price? Well, the main main reason is it's not using the same panel as either the LG or MSI alternatives. LG's monitor uses a gaming grade IPS, hence its high price tag, while MSI has used an 1800R curved VA from Samsung. The NX EDG 34S is using a different 1500R curved VA panel, with this newer panel presumably costing a bit less for OEMs to buy. But that's really the only reason I can see from the spec sheets. This new Nixius ultrawide still packs adaptive sync with low frame rate compensation and as far as I can tell it works fine on AMD and Nvidia GPUs without any flickering issues. It's a wide gamut panel, three year warranty, yeah, all standard stuff. The performance investigation I guess will tell us a lot more. The other area Nixius has cut down on costs is the build. The more expensive MSI and LG offerings come with better and more robust designs, while the NX EDG 34S is definitely on the cheap side. I wouldn't say it's bad, overall it's quite sturdy and comes with a wide metal stand, but the heavy use of plastic for the display section itself is a bit underwhelming and feels a bit cheap. I mean this monitor is cheap, so I guess it fits with the price, but yeah, it's just nothing amazing. Perhaps a bigger concern is the lack of adjustability here. We do get tilt support, not the best mechanism I've seen there, but the bigger mission is no height adjustability. The monitor can be vase mounted if you want to supply your own stand to fix this, but out of the box the monitor sits quite low and can't be raised higher natively. I've seen more and more budget monitors offering height adjustability, so I would have liked to see it here as well. There are some LED lights on the back, nothing special as they're not RGB, just standard red LEDs. They can be disabled if you don't want them. The selection of inputs is good with two display ports and two HDMI inputs. HDMI is limited to 100Hz, while both display ports can go up to 144Hz. No directional toggle for the on-screen display, so it's a bit hard to navigate with just face buttons but there aren't many features in here aside from picture and color control, so it's not like you'll be navigating in there frequently. Now let's talk performance. I guess that's why you're all here, to see if this new cheaper 144Hz panel is up to scratch. For this monitor, Nixius offers four overdrive modes, but like a lot of monitors, we can discount the off and low modes as they're pretty slow. Yeah, no overshoot if that's a big concern for you, but for gaming, you'll probably want something faster. The optimal mode here is the middle mode. Immediately, you'll see the telltale signs of a VA panel in that upper left corner of the response time chart. We see red boxes, and that means slow transition which in this area means dark level smearing. The extent of dark level smearing is a 13.15 millisecond average, which itself is an average result for a V8. It's not terrible, it's not amazing, it's pretty typical, but certainly it is a problem for this display. The overall greater grade average is also pretty typical of a VA display at just below seven milliseconds. This gives us a borderline 144 Hertz experience as 70% of transitions fall within a reasonable tolerance of the 6.94 millisecond refresh window. Ideally, I'd like to see this figure up above 80%, but as with the AOC CQ27G2 review I did recently, 70% is okay. With this performance, you are getting a comfortable 120Hz experience, and then it just manages to deliver something extra at 144Hz. 
The high overdrive mode isn't recommended because of overshoot. 40% of transitions are outside our overshoot tolerance. And in this mode, you will spot a fair bit of inverse ghosting trails from 30 to 40% overshoot for some transitions. Yes, it does deliver a four millisecond gray to gray average, which is what is printed on the box, but realistically, you won't want to game with this mode. Interestingly, as we flick between high and middle overdrive performance, there does seem to be some room here for this panel to deliver better performance with tweaks to the overdrive system. If we paired the dark gray performance of high with the light gray performance of middle, we'd end up with even better response time. So I wonder if another OEM will do that with this panel. Middle also gives us good performance throughout the adaptive sync range. Average response times get better as we move through 120, 100, and then 60 hertz, although overshoot does increase slightly. However, even at 60 hertz, this isn't a problem, and we're one millisecond faster for response times here, so that's decent. It means you can set this monitor to the middle overdrive mode for all refresh rates. How does this performance stack up to other 3440x1440 ultrawides? The story here is quite interesting. The Nixius NX EDG 34S sits in the middle of the pack, so even among VAs, it's far from the worst on average, with some panels delivering 8 millisecond response times. This includes the budget Kogan 100Hz ultrawide, which has an 8.35 millisecond grade to grade average, which would be unsuitable for 144Hz. The Kogan model uses an older, cheaper panel and costs a few hundred dollars less, but we can see here that this new new 1500R curved panel is offering faster response times to hit 144Hz. However, we aren't getting premium 144Hz performance. Both the LG and MSI options are in the 5 millisecond range on average, which is 2 milliseconds or about 40% faster. They remain really solid buys for high and ultra wide gamers. The 200Hz VA panel used in the extremely expensive Acer Predator X35 is also faster at a 4.27 millisecond average, so it's clear that while performance has improved for this Nixie display compared to older value ultrawides, the gap remains to the best of the best in this class. MSI's $800 144Hz ultrawide also delivers better dark level performance as you'd hope. It's still somewhat an issue for the MPG 341 CQR, but again, MSI's model is 35% faster than the Nixius, which performs more like a typical VA. If you really want to cut out dark level smearing, you'll have to grab an IPS panel like the 34GK 950F. Response time compliance, as I said earlier, this is a borderline result and that means mid-table in this chart. You will get a better experience from the MSI and LG options, but the NX EDG 34S isn't bad and I wouldn't say it offers fake 144Hz or anything like that. It's still a noticeable step up from 100Hz offerings like the Kogan Ultrawide, and even when comparing those two monitors at 100Hz, the Nixius is a fair bit faster. Error performance is mid-table and nothing to be concerned about, even though MSI's model does come in with a higher inverse ghosting rate, it's still a non-issue at below 15%. The NX EDG 34S also delivers decent 60Hz performance with a 5.98 millisecond gray to gray average, outperforming both the LG and MSI models. While those monitors need to have their overdrive modes turned down at 60Hz to avoid ghosting trails, no such tweaks are needed with the EDG 34S. Processing lag for this monitor is around 1.5 milliseconds, which leads to a total input lag of about 12 milliseconds, a bit slower than the premium ultra-wide models we've been comparing to throughout this review. With that said, input latency isn't much of an issue for modern gaming displays, so let's move on. This monitor delivers excellent power consumption figures, shaving off 16 watts compared to the MPG 341 CQR, and even slotting in lower than Kogan's 100Hz ultrawide. It seems this new panel is quite efficient compared to other 34-inch models, which is great to see. Let's look at color performance now. Out of the box, there were a few concerns with grayscale performance, mostly resulting from an incorrect white point, nothing unusual from a budget monitor. Gamma was kept reasonably in check, but the delta E average of 4.42 could be better. In saturation, we're seeing two problems. Firstly, the incorrect white point shifts up the chart to deliver slightly wrong values across the board. Then we also get oversaturation of sRGB colors as this wide gamut monitor comes with no sRGB clamp. The end result is an average delta E of 3.13 and similar numbers in the more intensive color checker test. We can correct one of these issues with the OSD controls, and that's the white point. With these tweaks you see here, I was able to bring my unit to a more accurate state, although as panels do vary from the factory, these settings may not be appropriate for everyone. 
After these settings were applied, Grayscale Performance improved to a sub 2.0 Delta E. We also saw a one Delta E point improvement to performance in saturation and color checker. Still have the oversaturation problem from earlier, but Delta E's are more in the 2.0 range now, which is pretty acceptable. From here, we can go through a full calibration with the software profile, and as expected, when testing against sRGB, we get excellent performance. If you're interested in testing the profile I created, that's available for our Patreon members, links in the description below. For wide gamut performance, let's first look at color space. This monitor isn't amazing in this regard, but with 87% coverage of the P3 color space, we are getting an increase over regular sRGB. This is a common level of P3 coverage for a budget VA panel. What this means in practice is we do get a bit of clipping at the top end after calibration, as you see from the saturation chart. Delta E averages are still strong, but just be wary when working with P3 images that not every color can actually be displayed here. Brightness is decent at 360 nits. That should be fine for most users, and viewing angles are also good. This is a curved panel, so you will still want to sit in the center to avoid issues viewing the curve at a weird angle, but viewing angles are still much better than a TN, for example. Contrast is also very good. The VA panel MSI uses for the MPG 341 CQR was on the weaker end for VA contrast ratios at just over 2000 to one. But this new model seems to have no trouble pushing up to more like 2800 to one after calibration. That's a strong result and delivers reasonably deep blacks, which means if you game in a dark room, you should see good black levels and rich shadows. This is one of the downsides of choosing LG's 34GK 950F, for example, as the contrast ratio for that display is below 1000 to 1. I was also seriously impressed with the uniformity of this new panel. While older curved ultrawides suffer from poor uniformity quite often, this panel delivers an excellent experience with no uniformity issues whatsoever. To see every area of this wide display fall within a 2.0 delta of the center is quite remarkable, and I hope this is a start of a trend where we get better uniformity with curved VA screens, notoriously one of the worst panel types in this regard. So should you buy the Nixius NX EDG 34S? It's definitely a good monitor, and I really like the use of a new panel here. That's because my main concern going into this review was that companies were going to essentially start overclocking existing 3440x1440 100Hz panels to achieve 144Hz refresh rates. Current 100Hz panels really aren't fast enough for this, so if Nixius had gone down this path, the end result would have been poor performance at a higher price. But luckily, this hasn't happened. The new 1500R curved 3440x1440 144Hz VA being used in this monitor is a step up from what we've seen in the past. It's about 30% faster than older 100Hz models, which allows for better response time performance that essentially unlocks 144Hz as an option. The response times are borderline good enough for 144Hz here, but there's no doubting this is still a faster, smoother, and more responsive experience than previous budget ultrawides. However, and this shouldn't be much of a surprise, you're not getting the same 144Hz experience as the top end and much more expensive monitors like LG's 34GK 950F and the MSI MPG 341CQR. Both of these, including MSI's VA offering, are around 35% faster and in the case of the LG model, have no dark level smearing issues. So while the NX EDG 34S does perform well, offering mid-tier performance at a mid-tier price, there's still a reason to upgrade or at least consider those more premium models. Aside from response times, the NX EDG 34S performs well in several other areas. No issues with input lag, outstanding uniformity, decent brightness, and a great contrast ratio. Factory calibration is mediocre, but the bare bones are there for a decent calibrated experience with a touch of wide gamut on the side. This is genuinely a good panel at this price and improves upon older curved VAs in some key areas. I wouldn't say this is a home run for Nixius though, and I probably wouldn't elevate it into great or must buy status. It's good, but not quite at that great level. The design is lackluster with no adjustability and a fairly average plastic build. Its feature set is also completely bare bones with no game friendly features like crosshairs or backlight strobing. At $550, the NX EDG 34S is a good buy though if you want something faster than 100Hz and are willing to spend a bit more than $400. But don't want to go all the way up to LG or MSI's premium $800 plus options. As I said, it sits in a great place in the market.
One thing I will say though is we are expecting several other 3440 by 1440 144 Hz options using this panel in early 2020 with the AOC CU34 G2X and the Lenovo G34W, which I'm hearing could be priced as low as $500. So there could be a bit of a price war for this technology, and if that pricing eventuates, this Nixius option at $550 might be a bit expensive. But at least you've now seen how this panel performs, so you can make a call on which option is right for you. And of course, pricing does change often for these monitors. So yeah, keep an eye out on your favorite retailers. That's it for this review. As always, you can subscribe for more monitor testing. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget we have our Patreon page if you want to sign up and get access to our Discord chat where you can ask me monitor questions at any time. I'm always in there responding to you guys. And I'll catch you in the next one.